what on earth is going on? And why is that? Why is that going like that? Hello. Yes, it is supposed to be live. Yes. Can you hear me? Can anyone give me an indication that you can hear me? I am um, staring at a screen. It seems to be doing the countdown, but uh, you can't see anything. Um, I can't see anything. Miles, can you actually hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. It just seems to be halting every few seconds. Oh, wow. Okay. Can you actually see me? Or what can you see? Just tell me what... what <laughs> Thank you, Celine. Yeah, just tell me what you can see at the moment, because all I can see is the countdown timer. You can see me. This is weird. It's possibly something to do with my computer. So if you can see me, uh, let me see if I can get into this. Aha, now, okay. So uh, what you should be able to see me is, let's have a look at that. Spotlight is on me. Hopefully you can see me now. It's just, for me, it's, all I can see is a countdown timer. So I suppose I'd better just sort of uh, continue, although it looks bizarre. Um, okay, so <laughs> um, it's really hard to do this without, without being able to see myself. So I can see myself on that, that little bit there then. So let me get the chat up again. Uh, right. Okay, Oscar, how are you doing? Stop picking my nose. It's nerves. If it, if it gets any worse than this, I'll probably sort of uh, scrape my entire nose off. Um, let's have a look. Large seascape and three small screens. Okay. All right. Okay. So, right, if you can see it, uh, I'll, I'll carry on. Okay. Um, I'll, I'm going to keep an eye on the chat. Okay. And uh, oh, now it's, it's finally sort of 
got got through to me. Now I can see myself. So um, let me just grab that. So I've just switched to that. So that's a, a, a seascape uh, in the Mediterranean. It's a uh, Calanque uh, near Marseille uh, that I've got. And I'm going to switch around. That That's what I'm going to be painting because um, that's what I've been painting all week for my students. Uh, and you should be able, if I double click this, you should be able to see the palette now. Okay, that's the palette I'm using. So titanium white, cadmium yellow pale hue, permanent rose, uh, cobalt blue, burnt sienna, and no black. But this is that one there dioxazine purple because i think it'd be useful it doesn't look very purple on that screen but anyway that's what i'm going to be using because i'm going to be kind of challenge channeling my inner um claude monet i suppose for this so i want to paint an impressionist uh, uh painting of this and do keep letting me know what's uh, what's going on so uh here i am at the moment so if I go back to the, I'll click it there. Oh, it won't let me do that. Okay, so there is my paper, which is not not staying stuck down because I'm using low tack tape. But there's nothing I can do about that. Let's put a bit more on there. Keep that edge down there. Okay. All right, so I hope you're all keeping well, and uh, and I'm going to start. I'm going to start with this uh, this brush here. That's about um, three quarters of an inch that that brush, but it's a it's an oblique flat bright. Okay, so there we go, and I'm going to do my drawing. It's pretty. You can't. Can, can you see the actual other? Um, let's have a look at that. See what happens there. Does that? No, doesn't really. Nice to be in live streaming with you. Okay. Okay, Oscar. Yeah, great. Thank you very much uh, for that. So I'm going to uh, start off by putting in the horizon line, you know, the, like the, the, the sea line, about a third of the way up. Okay. So that's there. And then I'm going to say that the the edge of that cliff, no, the nearest one to us kind of comes in like that and it goes off here. Now, that uh, image that I'm uh, using is uh, it's more of a letterbox shape. So the, the photographer has um, cropped it for us, you see, which doesn't happen in real life. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. We're not living by the, uh, uh, the all the coves on the coast of uh, Marseille. So we just have to use photographs. So it's a nice one because we can use nice warm colors. So this is, a, a, I suppose, an exercise in using warmth and also in what we'd call it, uh, um, what would be uh, atmospheric perspective. You can see there that the, the headland just beyond the, the one that's in focus is pale. And that gives us a sense that uh, it's further away. And then you've got the other uh, piece of land at the very uh, back on the right of the screen, which is uh, very, very far away. So there's a huge body of air between us and uh, it. And to make things look further away, just make them pale, uh, paler and uh, less detailed. OK, so let's go back to that. OK, so here we go. Uh, the headland kind of over there like that i'm going to put the boat here i don't want it too far over to the right so i'm going to, i'm changing it to suit myself so the boat will be there like that uh i'm just going to put in an indication that the, there are kind of rocks receding away from us in very in steps kind of thing so if we put that there move that one out down a little bit okay that's good Okay, so and now let's uh, try the, the the green. So the greens kind of come down there like that. 
they come across the top of the the rocks there up there that's it and there there we've got the the shadows in in the rocks they're important things to have in there so maybe like that you see that area is a, a shadow area there and you've got some more shadows here coming down like that so we're going to kind of get them in as areas to to treat but i'm not going to stick rigidly to them because just because i always like to imagine that i'm there i'm standing at the water's edge uh painting this scene and uh and you've obviously you've all been on holiday in in hot countries or you live in a hot climate and uh you can't stand too much of 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 that kind of heat really it does get quite sort of oppressive um you know lovely and all as it is uh especially say if you're irish like, you, know, you can't take that kind of heat uh you know the, my fair alabaster skin so there that that that's essentially the the kind of drawing uh you know the limit of what i need to do see there's that shadow part there and i'm just going to make sure that i know that that shadow there and that shadow there are reflected those are the two principal ones okay they're reflected in the water so in fact that's my drawing so now i'm going to change my brush to this like this is like a one centimeter maybe half inch uh, uh brush another flat bright okay and i'm going to mix up and i want to change the change the scene for this yeah okay so what i want to do is mix up a, a kind of a nice warm uh stone uh, color so lots of white I need to make sure i've got plenty for going all the way through the painting some yellow cadmium yellow pale hue some permanent rose Oh yes, that's very good, Oscar. Thank you very much for uh, for thinking of me. Uh, do give the the video a like; it helps the algorithm sort of uh, seek me out. I always forget to say these things. I'm not really au fait with all of that. So there, we've got we've got this kind of um, very warm orangey kind of pink. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to that because it's not going to be completely, um, you know, bright pink. It needs to be sort of just subdued somewhat. So a little bit of blue into that. I'll put a bit more yellow, put a bit more red. Okay, so I've got a, I've got a, a, an amount of, of color there. Now I'm going to make a shadowed version. So I'm going to pull some of that same color apart and put some blue into it and a bit more red, a bit more blue. And that will give me a kind of a shadowed tone. But it's made from this, you see. That shadow is made from this. So I've often seen my students, they go off and they mix a separate, an entirely separate mix for the shadows. And um, and somehow they don't look coherent. So if you make your shadows from the body color that you make. So back to the, uh, back to the other. There. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to put in this shadow version here. I can't talk when I'm painting the shadow version. I don't know what I'm talking about. The, the, the areas in shadow, I suppose. There we go. This comes down there like that, perhaps. And no, tr just trying to block it in. So um, the, the important thing is is the, the blocking in stage because it kind of sets the tone for the entire painting because the, the blocking in supports, uh, it carries the, the painting all the way through. Okay, I'm going to bring that down there because it's reflected in the water, isn't it? And the same one here, reflected in the water. If you did it over here, for example, and you left that blank, it, it just wouldn't look right. So it's got to look as if it's reflecting. Maybe here there could be a, a nice one there that coming down there. I should bring that down a bit further. Didn't I say there was a step here? Okay, so there we go. That's there. So there are some shadows. Have I missed any others? That could come up here a bit, I suppose. Um, up here. Okay, that's that, that's good. And now let's put in the body color. 
make sure I've got my rag ready. Uh, the body color. I'm going to actually add a bit of red and yellow into that a bit more, just a touch more blue. Okay, to make it even more pink. All right, and the reason I'm I'm doing that, I'm making it so pink because it's not like the uh, the photograph so much. Let me just uh, go through that with you because it's important. Photographs can often be dull, I think. You know, uh, photographs of beautiful scenes like that, they often don't uh, tell you anything about the heat of the place. They see, seem to even everything out. Uh, and, and so your job as an artist, so it's not like a photographer. The, um, photographers, you know, we have a, a bit of, uh, we do sort of wander into each other's territory. But I think painters more, we tell stories and you've got to tell the story. That's what the impressionists were doing of what is there. And what is there is a very sort of sun soaked scene with, uh, you know, the, if you, those rocks, if you touch them, you'd know that they were, they were hot. You know, you'd feel, you'd feel the heat coming, radiating off them, uh, you know, and you, you, you'd be thinking about going for a swim, uh, you know, in this situation. But the, I don't think the photograph really relates that too well. You know, the fact, the, 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 those um, trees above are sun-soaked as well, and they'd be giving off that maritime pine aroma. You know, it, it's it's a perfumed aroma, and it fills your senses when when you're there. There's nothing quite like it, and uh, and you need to get s something of that across in your painting by heating everything up, by amping up the 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 temperature and the ooh, not that one, the temperature and the and and the. I suppose would be, would be the, the contrast and things like that. So let's do that again. Let's go back here to the corner. There may be a bit there. So, but this at the moment is just um, just the uh, areas of rock in sunlight. There. Okay, I think I'll leave that now, just because I, I, I'm, um, I want to leave space to, to get some of that foliage in. And so, of course, the, the, if that is there, then, of course, you're going to have the reflection down here. It's got to agree. This part has got to agree with that. It's the same with uh, when you're painting still lifes. You know, you're painting silver or, uh, you know, or glass, everything. You know, both sides have got to agree that the, the inside of the painting has got to agree with the outside of the painting. Okay, so that will do me, I think. Maybe we'll put a bit of that in there. All right, so now we're going to move on to the, the green. Uh, Miles, it, it, it's, it's no more challenging than painting uh, maybe a few lemons rather than one lemon. Because as you're painting things, they can get more complicated. They may, can get as complicated as you make them. Okay, so, and part of your job is actually to simplify things as well. So I must bear that in mind while I'm painting this for you. Let me just grab that and I'm going to, yes, okay, so here we go. Right, so I'm going to make the, the foliage color. So green, so yellow and blue makes green. But in my palette, that makes quite a toxic green, uh, you know, an acidic kind of green, which I don't want. So I want to have some red in it and that will turn it towards more natural green okay so something like that and now let's make a, a shadowed version of the body color so put a bit more blue into it perhaps a bit more red into it okay so let's check the uh any again and go back in here all right and let's put in some of the the foliage so this is just a, a big kind of uh, block where I see that foliage going in. Just push that up a little bit. Up there. Avoid that shadowed rock part. Don't, uh, when you're painting this kind of thing, don't get involved in the details too, uh, too cl close to the start of your painting. You just want to get it sort of uh, in blocks. There, block there like that. Block there like that. Some of that foliage is coming down. 
and here there's foliage and where else it's coming down here perhaps down there down there and the, the 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 thing to do is to try and keep your blocks separate from each other so you don't sort of get too much of the green into the pink uh, side of things and too much of the you know or too much of the sea color into the rocks that you know just try and keep these uh, areas separate and i'm going to put in some darks in there because this has been reflected down into the sea as well you can see it in the in the water let's put a, a line down there down there okay so we've got that now let's move on would I recommend the same colors for watercolor? Hmm. I'm not a watercolorist, so I, I don't want to sort of lead you astray. But the, the more you can simplify your palette, the better, because you won't be um, you won't be getting confused by like two different reds or three different reds or three different yellows. Uh, try and keep it down simple as possible and try and make all the colors that you need just from those. So maybe do try it. I mean, it's a... It's a relatively uh, inexpensive way to start, isn't it, if you limit your palette? Uh, and then if you feel there's a color that you really can't get by without, you know, uh, add that to your 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 um, palette. Okay, so, um, yeah, I don't see why not. You're working backwards, of course, compared to oils. You're working from light to dark. But... Okay. <coughs> All right, so uh, where was I? Let's, I'm going to make the the sky now, okay? so. I'm going to make it uh, a blue. Change that. And go to the palette. Okay, so I've got some white here and some blue. Mix that up together. It's a reasonably light one. Uh, and make sure I've got enough because I need to do the C as well from the, almost the same mix. Or from the same mix, actually. You know. So there's the blue. It looks very green on that. It actually isn't like that. It, it is blue. Gosh. So I'm going to add this. Oh, that is very, very toxic looking blue. It isn't really, isn't like that. It's more, that's a very greeny blue. I don't know what's happened to my cameras. Towards the end, maybe I'll, um, I'll use a different camera and see if I can show you what it's actually like. So I'm just coming around. You might be able to see me in the thumbnail. I, I have to sort of lean over to paint. Uh, off to my left, because that's where the easel is set up. I'm going to keep that there like that. That's that's that headland, and across there, keep that. I'm just trying to cover as much of that as I can, as quickly as I can. Let's say that's fine there. I'll move that there. And then into the water. That's being reflected down here in the in the sea. Just keep my little image of my boat that I've got there, a little indication of where that is. If you have cobalt blue and you add white to it, that's the the color that i'm using and it seems to be greener at the top than it is at the bottom of the screen and for me it's exactly the same weirdsville man right okay leave that there for the boat okay so now we've got uh, the sea reflected top and bottom oh the uh, i say the sea reflected from the sky i'm going to put it in a dark now across here because it's very dark in the uh, in the image. Can can you all see the the the, the actual image that I'm painting from still in, in in thumbnails? I hope you can. So I'm going to make. Uh, let me just turn that. Okay. So that dark area is going to be blue and red. 
and there's just a touch of yellow maybe a bit more red something like that yeah that would do okay back to the painting um, yeah okay so along here up to there and then it steps up a bit and goes across there like that and then it steps up again about there like that there's a little rock there that I'll, I'll put in later okay and then there are some very sort of uh, dark parts that I'm going to put in kind of um, caves I suppose in there I'm just going to add these into the blocks without disturbing the block too much in there hi Ivor how are you doing you're looking well and here we go put that in there maybe okay and then there's a kind of a dark there i'm not being too slavish to the uh to the photograph okay there right and maybe put some of that in there as well because that'll be reflected right so now i've got a kind of a, a nice underline <laughs> underneath all of that now the that headland here it dis it's disappearing into the in, into the into the sky so what i'm going to do to in order to do that and uh, i i feel this is uh, logic okay all right so i've got my i've got my uh, uh rock colors here so if i just take some of that rock color the the shadow part and mix it in with some sky That'd be like we're looking through lots of sky to see the um, the rocks, but I am going to add in a little bit more red and a little bit more blue. Okay, but it's mediated with the sky, and I'm going to do the same with the rock color as well. Okay, afterwards. Um, right, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, it's up here. So I'm doing the doing the top parts first. That there. In fact, these are the parts where the uh, where the vegetation is, I suppose, but very, very distant. And then all coming down here, coming down to the sea. It's a very massive sort of uh, piece of rock. Okay, coming down there like that, and then. Uh, I'm just going to, I, I won't switch uh, to the, um, I won't switch to the palette now. I'm just going to mix up that rock colour with the sky colour. And I'm going to add a touch of red, I suppose, and a touch more yellow. Okay, and then I'm going to put that, that in here. Okay, so that's nice and far away now. And as we put more detail into the rocks uh, here, that will recede. Now, the re really distant uh, uh, strip of land, I'm going to put uh, more blue into that pink, I think. Yeah, so it's darker than the sky, but uh, lighter than the, the rest of the land around push that up a little bit there and I'm gonna have to push the sea up a little bit there as well so let's grab some of that and put the sea up okay so I'm not doing anything with the boat yet okay right next thing is is back to the rocks so uh, I'm going to heat up some of that uh, that rock in sunlight sort of uh, part 
so we can make it more orangey okay so we need to put in some variations in hue around there there because there's a whole you know there's heaps of of activity in the in those rocks you know un, you know facets facing this way and that and you just want to need to get a kind of a, an idea and each what each facet will be reflecting just slightly differently from uh, the the bit next to it okay so uh here too there and i recommend that no matter what you paint or where you paint you try and tell us tell a story by amping up what is actually there so for example you know if you are painting an, an irish scene or whatever you still might do the same thing because who wants to look at a cold painting it's nice to uh um you know play god i suppose and make the thing into what you want it to to look like there's nothing wrong with that and it's that's kind of our job not like the the job of a you know a reporter or a, a you know press photographer we've got to sort of uh, we can lie a little bit so so i've done that i'm going to change my brush now to one like that that's about five millimeters okay so and it's still a flat okay a flat bright okay so now i'm going to add in really light bits so i'm going to add white and yellow to that same mix i suppose it's unfair for me to just tell you that and, uh, and not show you uh so th that was my rock color there that was the bit with more red and uh, kind of an orangey sort of hue to it and now i'm adding more white over here just to get a different grade of warm color okay so uh let me oh where am i i <laughs> see i've got i've got a printout beside me it's, it's not a bit not unfair on you really but uh it doesn't seem to be any other way of doing it so i'm putting in sort of uh rock-like formations i'm not uh necessarily copying the ones that are actually on my reference because uh I, we'd be here a month of sundays and nobody would ever know anyway and if you look at for example um a Cezanne, you know you could see you could just tell a lot of it is uh, his imagination, you know, especially in terms of uh, color. But there, along there, you know, you can you can let the texture do the talking as well. So I'm not flattening out my strokes. Texture is something else that uh, you know we have in our armory that uh, you know, for example, a photographer might not have. So why not use it? And so we've got these areas here and until it begins to look like rock. It's just lots and lots of undulations, um, rocks turning in different directions. And that's the story that you're getting across. Okay. And if you have any questions, do let me know. So, so I'm just pushing down into that sort of uh, dark there i think the impressionists kind of showed us the way in a bit uh, didn't they they uh, they transformed painting and made it a much more exciting thing i think there and then put some making it up as i go along but you know although i'm trying to sort of stick to the way that the rocks are i'm just not sort of uh, being slavish to it okay so we've got that there now i'm going to put some darks in uh, those trees okay so um i won't switch cameras at the moment so i'm just going to get some blue and red and yellow so it'd be a very dark version of that green and i'm going to put it in where i think is uh, makes the thing look like trees a bit more so my my ambition for this painting is to not have it uh, to be complicated, okay? So it's got to be um, very impressionistic and loose and very textured as well.
I have a habit uh, in my own practice of uh, being overly uh, descriptive, you know, which I freely admit. And I suppose uh, that's probably one of the reasons why I became an, became an illustrator, because I like to paint things and you know, represent them well. And in painting, though, it's, it's kind of a, it's a different game. Put that in there like that. There, maybe just push those out a little bit so as if they're just um, extending from the rock face. Uh, um, now, some more yellow into, a, into the original green, just so that I can get some highlights. There, there. Where the sunlight is catching the tops uh, of the canopy, if you see what I mean. I'm not going to overdo it. Now, round about uh, now, what are we? Sort of, um, let's see, what, 10 past seven? We're, so the, we're, we're about 35 minutes in, and the heat will be getting to you. And, you know, you've come out with all your painting supplies, but you've forgotten a bottle of water, or you've forgotten your hat. So <laughs> these are the things that will affect your painting. You know, and, you know the fact that there's... Uh, you know, no toilet nearby, you know, all those kind of things. And uh, you have to go in the bushes or there's crowds of uh, people sort of uh, who are distracting you. Uh, so you don't need to, you're not trying to end up with a photograph. Uh, you're, what you want is an impression. I'm just doing the reflections in the water uh, again. Miles, in your opinion, is illustration more of a skill than an art? Uh, the way I kind of think of it is it's more of a craft or there's a high level of craft. But it, uh, il illustration is such a wide ranging thing. So, for example, if you um, if you get some book illustration, I think it goes up into the uh, into the realm of art. And also I used to do um, I used to do uh, uh, editorial illustration and uh, I found it that I was given quite a lot of leeway to be uh, and the artist that I wanted to be. If you see what I mean, uh, the deadlines were so fast, you know, like I had three days to produce a, a color painting really, because that was my thing. I, I'd paint things by hand. I loved the painting part. And uh, there was very little, there was very little um, collaboration. Now they might tell me, can you, they did tell me in fact once, stop putting cigarettes in people's mouths. <laughs> so, uh, cause I like to have, you know, somebody, somebody sort of doing something and smoking a pipe. I don't know why I don't smoke a pipe. I uh, you know, haven't, haven't sort of uh, seen many people smoking pipes in my life, but it was just like this face furniture. And I used to put them in and I put them in as, as you know, right up until the time they told me to stop. I suppose that's a collaboration, isn't it? Illustration can be wonderful, but it's nearly always a collaboration and fine art might not be. But the thing is with the illustration is it gives you discipline. You know, you, you've only got a certain amount of time to produce something that other people are relying on. And uh, you've, you, you've got to know your onions, you know, and uh, I've met clients who, who, who said that they employed fine artists so-called fine artists and uh they just made a balls up of the entire thing just through being um uh, too proud to to change or to collaborate yeah uh, you know plus i've never met an artist that didn't want to to uh earn from their work the the world of illustration i think is more honest than uh, the world of art Uh, where are we? This is not really the, the question you were asking, but anyway. And you can tell that with all the bloody um, programs there are about um, art fraud. So I'm going to push some of that C into there a little bit. Okay, so we've got, oh, let me just uh, push that in there a little bit in there like that. 
So you, uh, I hope you can see now that the that headland far away is receding into the distance. There's, there's less detail in it. Just to make sure I don't if that I'm just kind of putting uh, some undulations in there and that needs to be slightly darker there there okay next thing is the boat so I'm going to grab a dark not a black remember we don't talk about black and then just going to put in a little flick there flick there 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 and then there's a, a kind of a light a mid gray here that's the back of the boat i think i might lighten that somewhat there okay and then there's the the mast now i need i do need a small brush for this um especially since I'm, I'm doing this publicly i don't i don't want to put a great big fat mark in and and then not uh not be able to retrieve it so i'm going to put that I, I need some kind of i've i've a strange uh thing a f sort of i don't know what you call it but uh strange eye that i have a tendency to do everything slightly on the on the on the slope and I, nearly every painting i've got where it has uh vertical strokes uh <laughs> they've canted off to one side. I don't know what it is. Oh, I've got a wonky eye, I think. So I'm going to put that down there like that. Just check it. Yeah, I've started to come in a little bit there. Yeah. So, and also I need to do a cross piece there. And a cross piece there. Or pretty sort of big but those i can uh, uh rescue so now i'm going to grab some of the blue i'm going to put a bit of yellow into it but just this is the sky blue and i'm going to start adding a little bit of nuance into that sky and then that means i can sort of sculpt that cross piece on the mast and that one too And then that is reflected down here as well. And now I can sort of sculpt the boat a little bit. There. And I'm not going to hide my strokes too much. I don't want to flatten them. I want the texture. I want the, the dabs. I want, uh, I want the viewer to see the, um, the brushwork because that's what I like about paintings, bits like that. Okay, push that in a bit there, in there, push that mast in a bit, I'm sculpting in with the... with the sky paint. Now, um, I want also to this is where uh, the, this, we're sort of starting to channel the inner money because I'm my blocking in is done. I've got started to go into details. So I, now I want to make a, um, I'm going to put my own stamp on this scene. So I'm going to get a bit of pink, just pink. So white plus uh, a little bit of red and a tiny touch of yellow. I'm going to put in some pinks into that sky. And down here, of course, because it's been reflected. Sculpt that. The other thing about illustrators, in fact, uh, is that 
when I learned about color temperature, I learned it from the illustrators because um, they have to make things look absolutely you know, good enough to eat. That's the, that's the job, especially in advertising illustration. Uh, so because the, the pictures are selling whatever it is that's, you know, is it packaging or, or whatever? Everything looks sort of amped up. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to add a different color in there. I think I'm going to add a little bit of green into that sky. So white, a little bit of yellow, and a touch of blue. More white there. Okay, and I'm going to add some greens into that sky, and obviously down here too. Just very light, pale green. Have a look at your impressionist uh, paintings, and and see those multicolored skies. Okay, so we we'll put them up there. Sculpt that uh, headland there. Push that in. <coughs> Hope I'm not sending you to sleep. There we go. Up there. Oh. I missed bits up there, so I want to make sure that those are occupied. Um, now, into the... Do you know what else I want to do? Because I, I said that I was going to do it, and I'm going to get some... Dioxazine purple. Dioxazine purple. And it's a great one if you're going to be painting bright uh, uh, Impressionist landscapes. You can add up, you can see this... Yeah, of course, you can't really see it very well on the color of my camera anyway. So, but, but same, same tone, very pale, very light. Make sure it's, I don't do it. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to put some of that in the sky as well. And it becomes a kind of an optical illusion. And uh, I think that when you are standing out in kind of an environment like this, is that after a while staring at things, your, your eyes do start going like that. They start seeing colors everywhere. And I think it was a brilliant observation, especially by um, Claude Monet. Wonderful use of temperature in his, his paintings. You know, the, the uh, uh, cathedral at Rouen that he painted uh, many times at different hours of the day. Great stuff. And down here, of course, it's got to go into the reflection of the water too. <coughs> now, there is a kind of a, a darkness in the water, which I'm going to grab a bit more blue and add it into the sky color and put it across here and it goes along there and not only that is it's kind of under the boat as well the boat is kind of got a kind of a a shadow not really a shadow but maybe it is a shadow <coughs> and the mast is being reflected as well so just in bits coming down there like that. Okay, so now I'm going to grab my small brush again, because this is only an A4 with 206, uh, 210 millimeters by uh, 296 millimeters. Uh, uh, I'm going to start putting some lateral strokes in for the water, for the reflection, okay? Uh, So they, they go into each other. So I'll be putting uh, strokes in in light, warm colors and strokes in in dark, cool colors. Okay. 
there like that and across there too because the undulations in the water are reflecting all around them uh, thank you miles uh, that's a nice compliment yeah i look back at my uh Uh, my comments or whatever. So going across there, across there like that. I'm not going to make too much of those. Something that I actually didn't uh, uh, do, which I should have done, is uh, in those rocks is reflected uh, either the sky or the water. I'm not sure which, but it is there, and you can see sort of quite bright blue, almost as as bright as the sea uh, in places in the rocks in some of the rocks i should say but uh, not many but uh, i'm going to put in notes because i think they need to be there there so okay some rocks there like that okay um we're not far off the where I'm going to finish this uh, um, painting yet. So now what I want to do is um, just before I do anything else, I'm just going to grab some uh, really bright. So almost like putting the highlights on a, you know, on a silver jug or something in a still life. So so white plus yellow plus a touch of um, uh, permanent rose, you know, the red. OK, I'm going to grab that. Make sure that there's plenty of paint on the brush because I'm going to just leave the paint on. And I'm going to put my own stamp on this boat by putting a bright across there. Okay. But nobody is to know that there was no bright there. But this will hopefully will sort of uh, give more of an indication that there is bright sunshine around. Now, I think I would like to add more to the boat on, on the right hand side there. Just gonna put that there like that. And then grab some more of that uh, lovely bright, uh, stick it along the side of the boat. Just because, you know, it's a fancier boat than the one that's actually there. Uh, now, just before I stop, I'm just gonna finish by putting in some very, very bright, rock reflections okay so because they are there and i'm going to make sure that there's plenty of uh, texture in it so just judiciously where i think it, it, they'll do the best for the painting There was a rock out to sea slightly, but I'm not going to put it in. And about now, you'll be busting for a, either a coffee, a, a glass of water, or a beer. All right, so I'm going to stop that there. I'm going to take my, um, take my palette away. Take that away, and I'm going to see if I can grab this off of here and change change camera. I've taped this down. It, it is textured um, oils paper. It's prepared for oils. It's kind of like gessoed um, gessoed oil painting paper. You can see the serrations uh, along the side there from the pad that was in. And let's move this across here like that. All right. And I'm going to move it down. Let's see which uh, camera might be better for color. Let's try. Let's try the palette one. Well, the palette one didn't look that great either. But yeah. okay, slightly grayish, but uh, you see all that. There's a kind of a, a very warm light above it, and that was maybe making the thing look green. It wasn't supposed to be green at all. Let's try the um, 
the camera that faces me. Okay. Hello, everybody. I don't know whether that's any better or not. Mm. I'm not sure if you can see that well. But there you are. And let's, let's kind of go up closer. You can see some of the texture anyway. If I turn it around. Hmm. Oh, yeah. There, that, that, that could show you some of the texture. So I used a, sort of a fair bit of paint. Slightly in pasto in places. There, you can see it there with the light shining off it. Yeah. There you go. What do you think of that? <laughs> Said he picking his nose again. I'm sorry about that. What can I do? Anybody there? <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Miles. So, um, you know, have you any questions? I should do a, a painting with uh, with an extended palette, um, or at least another palette which is a, a kind of a limited palette but with different colours on it. You know, and uh, you know because you know, for example, if I had an ultramarine blue, it would give a different uh, result, especially in the skies. Uh, thank you, Ivor. Um, Yes, yeah, so yeah, that's it. So, um, yeah, questions? We can sort of uh, uh, go on for another couple of minutes, or <coughs> if you are actually asleep, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's the, uh, the soporific effect that you wanted. Yeah. So I've painted that four times this week. <laughs> this was the four. Uh, so I painted it in my three classes. And I have them here, actually. Let me grab them. Not sure which one is which. Ugh. So let me see which one was the first one. That was that was Tuesdays. I mean, it's, it's going to look very much like the same thing. I think I made the the, um, the foliage warmer. And slightly browner in that one. Okay, Ivor, thank you. The second one, the second one was this one. That was Wednesday evening. And I did a better job of the boat on this one, I think, um, than the, the first one. Lots of detail in the, in the rocks, which is not in tonight's one, because... Um, I wanted to see if I, I could actually simplify it uh, a little bit. And this was this morning's one. Okay. And hang on, just if I can just grab the other one. That's the one that I've just done now. Mm, that was the one. Uh, there you go. See, I mean, you, you paint it, and it, it's very different every time you do it. For example, you know, the. I mean, the, the, the foliage is just uh, very different. It's obviously the same painting, but uh, you can't do the same thing twice. I can't, anyway. So there you go. So are you painting yourselves? You can paint, um, uh, you know, once a day. It'd be, be fantastic. You'll take off like a, like a rocket. Uh, so... If there's nothing else to, to go on, I might as well end it here. I mean, uh, it was very good of you to come along. Uh, thanks very much. Sorry about last week. I just felt dreadful. It wasn't flu in the end. I just sort of was drained. And uh, but, and I had a splitting headache, so I went to bed early. Uh, I feel great today, but um, that's it. Um, and uh, I hope to see you next week. Does the, the 6.30 time suit you more? I can't keep away from my nose. Does it? Yeah, six thirty. Oh, here, yeah. all oh, some things that I haven't written, uh, I haven't read. Uh, uh, oh, would you have a go at an Alfred Wallace type naive painting? I'm an ignoramus as far as art history goes, so I'm going to have to look up uh, Alfred Wallace and get back to you. 
it's true that you think uh, that naive paintings are simple to do. It's like abstracts. Every time I start an abstract, uh, I get some way into it. And I think, this is not working. It just feels fraudulent. So perhaps I would feel fraudulent if I, uh, if I attempted a naive painting because my natural inclination is to, to go for it and try and uh, get to you know, high standards. And it's not necessarily a good thing. Um, you know, I often see some of the paintings my students do, and I kind of wish I'd done them myself. And uh, I don't tell them that. I'm not sure why I'm telling you, but I mean, uh, it, it kind of truth. It's something that they do in their painting, and it was done through um, not being, uh, uh, you know, I suppose what you everyone would describe as a great artist, but um, they come up with stuff and you think, oh, wow, God, that's great. The wonkiness of it, the humanity. Uh, it's it's in the painting, and <clears throat> and I do tell them, you know, and I try to live by it myself. Is that the things that you can't do will become your style, you know? Which to which the answer then to that for me holding an art class is well, why are we coming to you then? Well, you know, what can I say? But it, it's uh, an attempt at encouraging people, and uh, and it's true as well. Some of the best artists weren't terrific uh, drafts people, you know. Uh, Paul Cezanne comes to mind, and so does Van Gogh. They weren't uh, uh, that terrific at drawing. Anyway, so that's what I think. And I'm going to look up Alfred Wallace. 6.30 is fine. That's great. Listen, guys, have a lovely evening. I'm going to go uh, into the house and have my tea and then uh, vegetate in front of the television for a, a few hours before falling into a stupor and going to, to bed. All right, so listen, have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week. Now, I'm painting with knives, uh, a palette knife, uh, next week at class. So that's possibly what I'll be doing next week. I'll just choose a, a subject and paint it. And when you're painting with knives, you can be painting very fast and getting a lot of work done. All right, listen, all the best. Have a lovely evening. Cheerio. Bye-bye.